My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today uh, we're going to um, answer a question that someone left, which was about um, all this talk, malarkey, and power and stuff like that. And a guy said, do I have more power in first gear or third gear or sixth gear? Well, no, he said first and sixth. Um, because obviously he said you have more torque at in, in first gear, so on and so forth. So I thought, right, let's just quickly work this out. So I did some just numbers i got some numbers basically um so what we want to do is we're going to look at a r1 can't but here it is 2008 or 2000 or something um and i think that this is a good way to um, demonstrate um gearing torque and power so uh it says that it's uh max torque Max torque at 10,000 RPM and it's 12 new, uh, 112 Newton meters. 12 Newton meters, that'd be pretty shit, wouldn't it? Right, <laughs> so the first thing you have to do is you have to get all the numbers and that's what I've written down on here. And you've got the primary reduction, um, so the primary, primary is 1.581. Can you see that over there? You can only just see that over there, right? And so basically everything goes through the primary reduction. So because everything goes through the primary reduction, which means we're basically slowing down, it goes to the clutch basket, which means it's also the um, input shaft once the clutch is closed and there's no slippage, stuff like that. So we've got 177 Newton meters. So because everything goes through the primary reduction, that number just stays that way. Right, let me just zoom out a slight bit so you can see what I've done there. There we go. So it's 1.581. Uh, so everything goes through that. Before we even get to the transmission, everything goes through that. So let's take first gear. First gear, uh, which is 2.533. You divide that out. So basically, uh, what we're looking at, that's 400 and 48 that's once it's been through the gearing so that's once it's been through the gearing this is newton meters and where are we going oh then we have to go through the final drive sorry so we've got final drive so we've got the final drive which is your sprockets so I'll put final drive in there and that's 2.688 with the oem setup um so basically once you go through your sprockets we are now measuring the torque at the rear axle because torque is at the rotational center of anything that you are applying torque to that's not the force which you have to divide out due to your tire diameter and wheel and stuff like that so we're still basically working in torque and then once we do that what we get at the end in first gear at 10,000 rpm we turn this 112 newton meters into 1,205.62 newton meters. So in first gear at 10,000 RPM, that's the torque you get right there, right? And then if we look at sixth gear, uh, where we are, where 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 are we? Um, I've completely lost myself now. Six gear, in six gear, once we go through the prime reduction, so 177, we go through six gear, and that's 224.613. All right, that, that's the torque that we have there. Just sit there. And then once we go through the final drive, so these numbers get plugged into the final drive and they get spat out this side. Once we do that, we get two, we get 603.759 uh, newton meters. That's the torque we get there. So we get the peak torque up here at, you know, that RPM, and we get the peak torque at the axle at the 10,000 RPM. All is good. So, 
Then we have to look at wheel RPM, because this is the important bit. Where did I do all this shit? Oh, fuck it, I'll just have to do it off the top of my head. Right, so, now we've got this, let's look at the RPM of this system. So, if we look at the R... Fucking Nora. <laughs> so, let's look at the RPM of this system. So, at the crank, we're doing 10,000 RPM. And then when we go through the final drive here, our RPM is um, reduced because we're going, we're increasing the torque. We're going from one one twelve at one one two to one one seven. The torque is going up, and then we've basically got a drop out. So you multiply by this number. You multiply one point one two by this primary reduction because we're going up in torque and we're going down in speed. So when we go down in speed, our primary reduction here. Um, from 10,000 RPM always drops to 6,325 RPM, right? Always, because that's just our prime reduction. There's nothing we can do about this prime reduction thing. Then what we've got is we go through first gear. Um, so let's just do let's just do RPM like this. So this is our drop, and then in first gear we go from um, where the bloody hell are we? Yeah, so it drops down. Once we do this gear reduction, it drops down to 2,497. Right? That's our RPM. It goes from this to this. Because it's two. It's 2.5 is this final... What's the reduction for it? 2.533. So that's our RPM now. That's in first gear. Right, that's what we dropped to. So now our output shaft is doing this speed. And then when we go through our final drive, we've got to go through the same kind of re uh, reduction here. So our speed is 928 RPM at that 10K. The engine's doing 10K and the rear wheel RPM is that. Then we look at six gear, uh, six gear, the gearing is a lot lower, so it's two. It's four thousand, as in the gear reduction is a smaller number. The gear reduction is one point two six nine, and we get four thousand nine hundred eighty four RPM. So you can see that our uh, output shaft is spinning faster. We do the same thing. We put it into our final drive like this, and what we get out of this is one thousand eight hundred and fifty four RPM at the rear axle, which is at the rear wheel, axle, wheel, it's all the same thing. So this is in a sense our rear wheel speed. Then all we have to do is we divide out the power for this. So we're going from, what is it? We're going from Newton meters. Oh, where are we? Why didn't I write this bit down? Like a tit. Did I write this down? No. Oh. oh, here we are. Yes, I did. Fucking, I thought I did. So, because of all this, what is it? Let me write this. Give me a second and I'll just rearrange all this because then we've got our speeds and so on and so on. Cut! Right then, so rearranging this a bit, we've got 12,000. We've got 12,000. Um, 12,000. 1,200 1, newton meters at rear wheel. Um, RPM at 928 RPM. Then we've got six gear, six or three newton meters at 1854. So all you have to do is you get your torque. So you get your newton meters. You get your newton meters and you multiply this. Now you do a dot or whatever, but I'm going to put a times because it's just how most people learn how to do maths as kids. And then you times that by your RPM. And then you divide all of this by 9,548.8. You can put that if you want. The reason why you divide this by this is because we have newton meters and RPM. Um, this is to get kilowatts, and then it's easy. It's 1.34, 1.35. You multiply that to get horsepower. If we're doing kilowatts of horsepower, it doesn't really fucking matter. So we'll just stick with this. So if you do this, where's my bloody phone? If you do this, if you get your, um, 
the numbers here. You can do this yourself if you want. I'm going to miss out the decimal points. Fuck that. Uh, so it's 1,205 uh, times your RPM, which is 928. And then you divide that by 9548. We'll just forget the decimals. Let's just wipe out the decimals. It's not going to give us a swing that great if we do. What we get for this one is 1,117. And we will do the decimals. Oh, no, fuck the decimals. I said we weren't doing the decimals. Kilowatts. That's how much power is. And if you times that by... I can't wait. Because it's all imperial stuff. Times that by 1.341. That was it. You get 157 horsepower. All right. Bingo. So that's in first gear. So if you're doing 10,000 RPM on this R1, in first gear, the engine, the, the work being done, the power that it's kicking out is one, 157 horsepower, which for the engine sounds about right for a 2005, 8, whatever R1. Yeah, fine. Then we do the same thing here. 603 times 1854 equals that and you divide that by 9548 and then you get 117 <laughs> kilowatts and if we times that by 1.341 we get 157 horsepower bingo job done so i hope that kind of explains a bit of what we've done so basically they measure horsepower at the crank so to put it visually like so they put the horsepower in the crank like that what we've done is we've done our primary reduction so this one here between these two that's our primary that's that one and then what we've done is that's your input shaft and then we have our output shaft and then we've gone straight to our rear sprocket with our gear like that and we're measuring here so we're measuring at the rear axle right there so we've done this reduction we've done that reduction for each one of the gears this gives us our rpm which makes sense the engine is starting out with the same newton meters um, of torque and if you go through this system in first gear you are going to multiply it like a motherfucker because this is 12 uh, 1200 uh, 1205 this is why you wheel spin this is why you can wheel spin in first gear because you have upped the torque massively reduced the rpm because it's 900 it's less than a thousand so when you give it the fucking full taps and try to go instantly to this amount of power output the tire slips this is why you can slip like a dickhead and spin around like a twat a wheel spin basically in first gear and second gear and so on when you get into six gear and stuff, this is why it's very hard and it lugs the engine in a sense because once it gets to the rear wheel, these are rear axle, the rear wheel uh, torque, you can see it's basically half, you know what I mean? And the RPMs are half, you've basically just flipped it upside down. And because you've done that, the horsepower is the same, the horsepower is just the same. So you can do uh, dyno pulls in first gear you can do dyno pulls in second gear in third gear in fourth gear in fifth gear in sixth gear the reason why generally they do dyno pulls in sixth gear is because uh, and well they build up they build up the speed and then do a run from like four of three or four thousand rpm because obviously you're lugging the engine and you could you dyno run you want to basically get a nice clean graph and allow the drum to spin up evenly or the brake, whatever your resistance against, if you had any current, stuff like that, whatever. You don't basically want to slip that wheel. So to have a nice gradual build-up of RPM so you can see it, initially you lug in the engine, you're in six. Yes, the rear wheel is spinning and the rear drum is spinning, but as you just get on the power, you are lugging the engine at first and it gives you that nice thing. If you did it in first gear, it'd go and it'd slip like a dickhead and your graph would be really, you know, the data collection duration the time it takes to take in all that basically make the measurements the dyno could quite easily keep up but like i say you're more likely to spin the shit out of it when they do um engine testing so you've got an engine test bed for a dyno and stuff like that there is no transmission a lot of the time depends what they're trying to do for engine design you're bothered about this bit 
you bother about this bit the transmission stuff you need to work out what this is so you can base your transmission on it so they do basically at the crank and this is a lot of times why they still do at the crank numbers the engine is capable of this after we stuck it in the bike even though the transmission is a lot of the times a unit construction which is part of the engine you know that's the way it works and as you can see you cannot and this is we're changing gear first gear to sixth gear and every gear is the same so changing your sprockets changing the sprockets will increase the rpm or decrease the rpm but it also has effect on the torque as well so as you can see you can do these numbers yourself do these numbers yourself but as you can see uh, no matter what gear you pick it will float around sometimes you get a 1.56 sometimes you get a 1.58 it floats around there and that's the gear ratios um and it's just just because we're not looking at the real world we're looking at it mathematically so when you look at this same power same power every time which whichever gear you stick it in you get the same power and this basically means that forgetting all the transmission it is all about the force that's applied to this piston what angle you know the angle of incidence this is applying to this crankshaft and the, the you know the stroke of this crankshaft without doing anything to this the core of the engine without doing anything to this you cannot make more horsepower you know what i mean you can recover a bit of horsepower by reducing the friction losses just saying you chain your transmission but we are talking tiny amounts we're talking you know point something point two of a percent something like that and it costs you a lot of money to do that you know what i mean these bearings and stuff and all this aren't cheap and people like to say all oh, in racing makes a difference well not if you're going club racing it does at moto gp level when these guys are pushing these bikes you know it's them going the fucking bike won't go quick enough that kind of stuff you know what i mean but it's generally this core engine it's this core engine bit that matters because this is where this number comes from hope that makes sense a bit more sense and I'll see you in a bit.